Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We are here at SHOT Show 2019, and I'm here with Hunter from Starline. Hunter, thank you for joining us. No problem, Gavin. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's been a really, really big year for Starline. A lot of new product. Tell me about some of the new SKUs and how they've been received. Uh, one, of the, one of the ones that we, we've really had a, a lot of good reviews on and sold a bunch of already, 375 Winchester. You know, it just, there's a lot of them out there, and nobody was taking care of that market. It just, they, they weren't supplying the brass that they needed. So we, you know, started from scratch. Uh, a lot of people thought our 3855, oh, it should just be easy, but that is not an easy cartridge to make. That is a, that, that cartridge is a thumper, high pressure, uh, a lot of work. Went back to the drawing board several times, but the finished product was just perfect. It's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, I really like how you guys have been able to take some of those specialty markets and provide product. Because, for instance, 762 by 39, Winchester used to make it in bulk, you know, and then it's really hard to find in brass to reload. Right, right. And you guys make it. In fact, I want to do a bunch more 762 by 39, including subsonic. I just got an adjustable gas block for my AK, and I'll be shooting it with the Omega 30 suppressor. Anyways, all that to say, it's really great to be able to have a source of readily available brass for that specialty caliber, yeah. specialty application, and I appreciate you guys doing it. Well, no problem. You know that that's one of those calibers that it it's hard to find good reloadable brass for. You know, you can you can shoot that caliber very cheap with with factory ammo, mm -hmm. but that is actually a very accurate cartridge, mm -hmm. uh, especially in platforms, uh, you know, like the CZ rifles and uh, bolt AR. guns. A lot of guys a like the of, bolt guns. A lot of the little, like the little CZ uh, 427. Yep. Ruger guns. American. A Ruger American. Uh, you know that they wanted brass cases that they could reload and were match grade, and and that's what they get with ours. Yeah, and I mean, it's always about taking that cartridge to the max and, and looking at what it's capable of, right. you know. And it's nice to have the option to shoot steel cased ammo or to shoot your own reloaded ammo with brass. You know, it just it gives is. you more options. Yeah, it, it is. And there's a lot of people that they'll build a really nice rifle and they don't want to run steel in it. You know, they want to run a good brass case. Um, and they're looking for all the accuracy they can get and, and that, that case will do it. What are some of the other new, since in the last 365 days, new new rifle cartridges or new pistol stuff that you guys have come out with? We came out with 455 Mark II last year. A lot of people had the Webley revolvers and no brass for them. Uh, one of the more recent ones, 222 Remington. You know, I saw that. A bunch of the old old varmint rifles. You know, great great old school caliber. A lot of a lot of old cool old rifles in there, and a lot of people just. Love shooting them still. Uh, overseas, still huge overseas as well. But uh, that was a good one. Uh, five five six by forty five. You know, it's uh, identical to our two twenty three externally and internally, but we do a little bit different heat treat between draws, and uh, it's it'll hold up to some to some high pressure stuff. Uh, That's been my most popular video this year. Is the whole two two three versus five five six thing? I mean, I went to the extent of drawing the chambers on the right. wall and went through all the differences and that kind of thing. And I think it's still something that a lot of people don't fully understand. Like when do you want the 556 five, brass specifically? I I like running the 556 five, in all my Wildcat stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I use it for 2545 sharps and 6x45. Since it holds up a little little better at the higher pressures, I just, you know, if you're gonna form cases it's it's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. If I was just running 223s for Prairie Dogs, I'd probably just use the 223 brass. But uh, I've gotten great results with the Starline 223 in my compass. Yeah. That is a heck of a rifle for about $200. I mean, we're talking headshots at 200 yards on rock chucks. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that 223 brass is great. I mean, it's it's super accurate. But if you're wanting to push it on up to that that next level, that 556 five, brass, honestly, it's I can't see any reason not to go with the 556 five, unless you're you're wanting to segregate loads between a couple rifles. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the heavy hitters in terms of product that's been on the shelf for a while. Obviously, 6.5 Creedmoor, large and small. Yeah. Primer is going to be big. What else is really selling a lot? Uh, lately, uh, you know, 450 Bushbaster has been doing pretty good. Yeah. All those states that are starting to let you use the straight wall rifle cartridges, Bushmasters, you know, it's a great cartridge that is perfect for that. I sat next to two Alaskans on the way down here. And those big bore AR cartridges are evidently popular for even bear defense up there. You know, and they're 
everything on the AR platform now is getting so affordable to build. You know, there, there's so many levels of uh, rifles that you can build. You can build stuff that's just cheap and functional and works. You can build some stuff that's kind of mid-range or top, you know, whatever you want to do. But uh, the, the AR part price is coming down so much. Mm -hmm. has just really opened up so many of those big bore cartridges to, to everybody. Sounds like a lot of fun to me, too. <laughs> yeah, it, not for your shoulder, but but yeah. yeah. So so here's some star, some Starline projects for 2019 I'll be working on. One, 6mm Creedmoor, large and small primer pocket. Um, I'm still lining up components and stuff for Grendel. In fact, if you guys have ideas on that, leave a comment. Um, I'd kind of like to do a bolt rifle versus an AR rifle again to look at that pure accuracy potential versus uh, some of the other stuff. And then uh, I got... 762 by 39 which I already mentioned. I got more of that coming up. I'll be doing subsonic loads. I like to do tracers with the uh, the AK platform. There's a lot to play with. What have you been playing with? Uh, you know what? I'm planning on shooting a little bit of PRS this year. Okay. I've been playing with a 224 Valkyrie some. Cool. Uh, always tinkering with AR stuff. I just I I got tracking confirmation that I I've got a Bushmaster barrel <laughs> and bolt that showed up at the house. Uh, I'm building a 50 Beowulf right now. It, yeah, I, what twist rate are you going with for 224 Valkyrie? Uh, it is a one in seven. Okay. Uh, I'm still not sold on what twists to go with. What do you guys think? Leave a comment. Mm. <laughs> you, it gets so finicky when you get into that six and a half twist yeah. and, and stuff, but uh, I'm planning on running an 80 and a half grain burger nice. uh, full bore, so that, that shoots great out of that seven twist. Mm -hmm. So. Very cool. Um, I will want to compare notes with you because I've done a lot with the Valkyrie this year and I've learned a lot. In fact, on that note, uh, I shared some of the results with you about my brass torture test. Right. Yeah, that is one of those calibers that people push it. And it, it, you got to look at it. I think I think you, you hit on it perfectly. If you're wanting maximum velocity out of that caliber, don't count on a whole lot of brass life. Uh, but then if you can buy a thousand pieces of Starline brass for three hundred sixty dollars. I say, if you know, I was just talking with Justin Johnson about this. The barrel life can be up there around five thousand, six thousand rounds. They've done a lot of testing on this stuff. Just buy a thousand pieces of brass. I got at least four reloads out of all mine, up to thirteen, and then you know you're you're basically going to shoot out your barrel about the time you shoot out your brass. And and I, you know, that's just one of those calibers. It's just it's that's that's the nature of the beast on that one. That brass. Uh, that brass is tough. It's just that caliber is tough on brass. But I've had great results. I've had zero failures, even in my torture test. I use a, I, I made a primer uh, no pocket no-go gauge, and I pulled them off the line when they uh, went two ten thousandths of an inch over the, the nominal spec. And they might have still held a primer fine and went a few more loads. I, I think so, but uh, my mentality was I wanted to do a scenario where it was like, this is for sure, and you're not going to have your AR lock up because you popped a primer and it went right. to the fire control and that, group. And when I'm when I'm testing brass that we're getting ready to put out, that's exactly how I do it too. That is one of the main things is uh, the primer pocket. Yep. So now I know you could probably talk about this for hours and hours, but like when you go from something like 223 to 222 Remington, how much work is involved at Starline to to do the dies and, and all the other stuff that you do uh, in terms of the cost of the equipment? Not exactly, but like right. like how much work is it? It, it depends on like like 222 and 223. That that was a pretty easy one. Uh, didn't take a ton of work, and I already knew, you know, I knew how to make that make that work. That was actually one of those that I felt really comfortable with. I was going to nail it the first time, and, and, I, and I did. It, it turned out great. Uh, you start doing some other stuff, like different body diameters. When you start getting into something that's a whole different body diameter, you've got to order different dies, different punches, or have them built in-house. We do a lot of stuff in-house for, for prototyping. But you, you, you may have five, ten grand in tooling. And then how? If you get it the first time. How long does it take? If it, between the time you, you say go, we're going to do this, and then the time you have reasonably good samples rolling off the line. Right. So a lot of times it takes about three months to get dies. So uh, if we do some of the prototyping in house, a lot of times by the time I get my form dies in, I've got parts to there and can can have a working sample within, you know, a lot of times within three months.
Gotcha. And so that leads us to, you know, with all this work that's required to support new cartridges, you know, there's a lot of requests I'm sure you guys get. How do you how do you decide on what are the right opportunities for your next products? So a lot of times there's there's like a, a stepping stone that has to be reached to make it worthwhile. Uh, we, we got requests for 357 Remington Maximum for, for years. We never really had a cup that was was going to work for that. We needed a cup that we could draw longer and have a good, strong, heavy cup. And we always said, as soon as we get ready to where we can do 223, which you know we've, we've just been doing the rifle game for about two, two and a half years. Yeah. So as soon as we could do the 223, we started working on that that 357 Max uh, stuff like that. You know, it may be a couple years before before we're where we can we can do it. Other stuff, it's you know, like we did 308. We started with 308. Well, obviously, the next logical thing to do is 338 Federal and 358, and you know, stuff that's on the same family, different different bunner, different head stamp, different form dies, and you're you're there. Uh, there are a lot of there's a lot of misses out there. You know, you'll think something's going to sell great, invest a lot of time and money into building it, and then you make 60,000 of them the first run, you sell 50,000 50, of them, and then you sit on 10,000 of them for, for years, you know. Because you've saturated that, that small market? There, there may, you may hear from 100 people that, that have to have it, and when it comes down to it, you think, well, I've heard from 100 of them, there's got to be 10,000 people that want it, and turns out, no, there was, there was about 100. <laughs> so, so, and I've got burnt several times on yeah. that. You know, there's some calibers out there that you flood the market, and, you know, that it is what it is. So a lot of, but sometimes we, we do stuff like that because it was easy. It didn't take a lot of new tooling. It was just something, you know, you make 5,000 people happy. It doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort. That, that's great, you know. Yep. Like 41 Special, that was one that, a lot of requests for it. Sold a lot more than we thought we would, but doesn't you know we don't sell a whole lot now. But gotcha. Only really worth doing at the time. So what do you guys want to see Starline make next? Then drop a comment. No guarantees, obviously, but of course we'll listen to what you guys have to say. <laughs> and uh, look for a lot more of this Starline content. Again, I got the 6.5 Grendel. I got six millimeter Creedmoor in both primer sizes, and I got 7.62 by 39 that I'll be working with this year. So if you guys have specific ideas about any related content that you want to see or specific loads or bullets or whatever, please also drop a comment. And Hunter, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time out of the busy sco show schedule here to talk with me, man. No problem. So really appreciate it. Yep. So lots more content coming up from here at SHOT Show 2019. Make sure you're subscribed to GavinTube with notifications so you don't miss out on any of that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Till next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.